Good day, grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson in redox reactions. In the last lesson, we basically covered what redox is, and it's a combination of oxidation and reduction. But in order for us to understand redox and be able to calculate and work out the balanced equations of a reaction, we need to understand oxidation numbers. So let's learn a little bit more about oxidation numbers. <laughs> Good day grade 11s. In this lesson, we will learn about oxidation numbers. Let us join Nelly as she explains how oxidation numbers fit into our basic knowledge of atoms. Let's begin this lesson by having a look at the model of an atom. Within the nucleus of the atom are positively charged protons. Negatively charged electrons move around the nucleus in different orbitals. Remember, an electron and a proton have the same size of charge. An electron has a charge of minus one, while a proton has a charge of plus one. For every positive proton, there is a corresponding negative electron. So each atom has no overall charge. It is neutral. This neutral state exists for all atoms of all elements. The arrangement of electrons in any neutral atom is known as the ground state. A ground state changes when electrons are added or removed from a neutral atom. This happens when the atoms of different elements react to form a new compound. During this process, electrons change position. They may leave one atom and join another. When an atom loses electrons, it has fewer electrons than it had in its ground state and is electron poor. When any atom has more electrons than it had in its ground state, it is electron rich. An oxidation number gives us an idea of how electron rich or poor any atom is. When an atom is electron poor, it will have an oxidation number greater than zero, that is positive. When it is electron rich, it will have an oxidation number less than zero, that is negative. Chemists have developed simple rules for assigning oxidation numbers to the atoms in both elements and compounds. When you assign an oxidation number, it is written above the element symbol. Here's the first rule. All elements not bonded to a different element have an oxidation number of zero. That makes sense. The atoms in these elements are neutral, containing the original number of electrons arranged in their ground state. These atoms are neither electron rich nor electron poor. Let's have a look at a few examples of elements in their ground state. The noble gases are found in group eight of the periodic table. They are all inert and do not gain or lose electrons or react to form compounds. Helium is one of the noble gases and is given an oxidation number of zero. We write the oxidation number of helium above the symbol. Notice that this value is the same as the valency of the helium atom. Unlike the noble gases, all other elements are not inert and atoms of the same element bond with each other in some way. We still apply the first rule of assigning oxidation numbers in these cases. Hydrogen gas is a good example. The element hydrogen is a diatomic molecule with the formula H2. This molecule has no overall charge and the electrons are distributed evenly between the atoms. The oxidation number of both hydrogen atoms in the hydrogen molecules is zero. We write this above the symbol. The sum of the oxidation numbers is written below the symbol. In this case, the value is also zero. The same applies to molecules of phosphorus, which has a formula of P4 and sulfur with a molecular formula of 
F8. Even where millions of atoms bond together in carbon or copper, the oxidation number given to these atoms is zero. The second rule for assigning oxidation numbers reads, the sum of the oxidation numbers of all the elements in a compound must equal zero. When we used rule one, we assigned an oxidation number of zero because the elements were neutral. Since all compounds are neutral overall, the oxidation numbers for compounds must also add up to zero. We can write this total oxidation number below the formula of the compound. Now remember, we said that elements become electron poor or rich when they bond with each other. So some elements in a compound must be electron rich and some must be electron poor. To comply with rule 2, we must assign oxidation numbers to all the elements within a compound. If we do this correctly, the sum at the end will be zero. The question is, how do we know which is which? Fortunately, we have another rule to help us. This rule lists the known oxidation numbers for elements in certain groups of the periodic table. All elements in group 1 of the periodic table have an oxidation number of plus 1 when they form compounds. All elements of group 2 have an oxidation number of plus 2 in compounds and all elements of group 3 have an oxidation number of plus 3. Oxygen is the only element of group 6 that has a fixed oxidation number. When oxygen combines to form an oxide, it is given an oxidation number of minus 2. All elements of group 7, the halogens, have an oxidation number of minus 1 when simple halide ions are formed. There are two important things to notice as you look at this rule. Firstly, you should see that the oxidation numbers assigned by this rule corresponds to the valency of the elements covered by this rule. Also notice that rule 3 doesn't give the oxidation numbers for elements in all groups of the periodic table. This is because for the transition metals and for elements in groups 4, 5 and 6, more than one common valency exists. So more than one oxidation number can be used. But using both rule 2 and 3 together makes it possible to calculate oxidation numbers for all the elements in any compound. See if you can do this for sulfur dioxide, which has a formula of SO2. The oxidation number for oxygen in sulfur dioxide is minus 2 because it formed an oxide. We write this above the oxygen in the formula. Now notice there are two oxygen atoms in this molecule, so the total oxidation number of oxygen is minus 4. From rule 2, we know the total oxidation number for the compound sulfur dioxide has to be 0. So, the total oxidation number of sulfur in this molecule must be plus 4. Since there is only one sulfur, this is also the unit oxidation number of sulfur. Rule 4 comes next. This gives us the oxidation numbers for ions and composite ions. Remember, a composite ion is a group of atoms that carry an overall charge. These ions can also be called radicals or polyatomic ions. Rule 4 reads thus. In any ion or composite ion, the sum of the oxidation numbers equals the charge of the ion. Here's a simple example for you to practice using this rule. 
Assign oxidation numbers to all the elements in this blue crystal, copper 2 sulfate. From the name of this compound, we know that the copper ions in this compound have a valency of plus 2, so the oxidation number must also be plus 2. The sulfate ion is a composite ion with an overall charge of minus 2, so the total oxidation number of the sulfate ion is minus 2. Again, the overall oxidation numbers add up to 0, which is correct according to rule 2. Let's have a closer look at the oxidation numbers of the elements in the sulfate ion. We assign an oxidation number of minus 2 to oxygen according to rule 3. Notice there are four oxygen atoms here, so the total from these oxygen atoms is minus 8. We now need to assign an oxidation number to the sulfur of the sulfate ion. Sulfur is in group 6, which is not one of the groups mentioned in rule 3. We need to work out its oxidation number. Using rule 4, the total oxidation number of the sulfate ion must be minus 2. We have just worked out that the total oxidation number of oxygen here is minus 8. The sum of the oxidation numbers must be the same as the charge of the ion, which is minus 2. How do we arrive at minus 2? By adding plus 6 to minus 8. So the total oxidation number for sulfur must be plus 6. Since there is one sulfur atom in the sulfate ion, the unit oxidation number of this atom is plus 6 too. Thank you Nelly for the explanation of the rules on how to assign oxidation numbers. Grade 11s, please make sure you know these rules very well. They are important as they help us to keep track of which elements in a reaction lose electrons and which gain electrons. Alright, grade 11s, I hope you found that very useful. Please, this is a very, very important. You need to know how to assign oxidation numbers. Like they said in the video, if you don't know how to assign oxidation numbers, you will not be able to tell which of the atoms are losing electrons and which are gaining electrons. And you cannot therefore work out which are being reduced and which are being oxidized. So please go through these steps one by one and when you feel confident, go through the assessment in the two enable system. Have a great day.